Hello and welcome to this next topic of OCR A-level chemistry. This is topic 25, which is called Enthalpy and Entropy. Now I'm going to start this video by explaining, first of all, what entropy is. And with entropy, you don't need to be able to give a quantitative definition. You don't need to be able to calculate entropy. What you need is a qualitative kind of idea of what entropy is. And entropy is essentially a measure of the dispersal of energy, which gets greater as a system gets more and more disordered. To calculate it, you need to kind of look at how many ways that things can be organized. The more ways that the things can be organized, like particles in a gas or particles in a liquid, the more entropy there is. So for instance, if you compare the entropy of the same amount of gas and liquid, then the gas has much more entropy because those particles can be in many more positions. A lot of the time we say that the gas is more disordered than a liquid. Equally, a liquid is more disordered than a solid. And the other way you need to be able to compare entropies, apart from with state, so solid, liquid, and gas, is also if you've got more molecules, you have more disorder. So, for instance, three moles of gas is more disordered than two moles of gas. And that, to me, is kind of logical. If I was going to look at how disordered things were, then I would say solids were the most ordered because of their fixed lattice. Liquids, less ordered, gases, even less ordered, and loads and loads of gas, more disordered than just a little bit of gas. The question becomes, why do we care about how disordered something is? Why is entropy a quantity that we need to talk about? And the reason we talk about it is because of something called Gibbs free energy. And Gibbs free energy determines whether or not a reaction is feasible. That's whether or not it can take place. And the way to determine if a reaction takes place is to calculate the Gibbs free energy of a reaction. And if the Gibbs free energy is less than zero, that means that the reaction is feasible. And this is the Gibbs free energy equation. This is what tells you whether or not a reaction is feasible. Delta G here is the Gibbs free energy, the change in Gibbs. Delta H obviously is the change in enthalpy. T is the absolute temperature. And delta S, S there is entropy. So this is the entropy change of a reaction. And as I said, if delta G is less than zero, then this reaction is feasible. And so there's three things which determine whether or not a reaction is feasible. It's entropy change, so if it's exothermic or endothermic, and the magnitude of that, the temperature, and the entropy change. And so we talk about how to calculate entropy change. And the way to calculate the entropy change is you'll be given data for the entropy of the reactants and the products, and you just do the entropy of the products minus the entropy of the reactants. It follows the same rules as other things we've done. You'll get entropies as joules per Kelvin per mole, add together all the entropies of the products, add together all the entropies of the reactants, and if the products have more entropy than the reactants, that means you have a positive entropy change. That's getting more disordered. If the reactants have more entropy than the products, that means it's getting more ordered. Okay, let's see if we can answer this question. So, so the entropy change of the reaction is minus 203 kilojoules per mole, and the entropy change is minus 176 joules per Kelvin per mole. Is the reaction feasible at room temperature? So to work out that answer, we need to put those values into this equation, the Gibbs free energy equation. If the answer comes out to be less than zero, then yes, it's feasible. If it's greater than zero, then it's not feasible. So let's do that. Delta H is minus 203. T is the room temperature, so 298 Kelvin. And the entropy change is minus 176 joules per Kelvin per mole. I'll put this in as kilojoules, so I need to change this into kilojoules per Kelvin per mole, so that the units are the same. So divide that by 1,000. OK, the answer comes out to be minus 151. And so yes, it's feasible at room temperature. And the reason it's feasible is because this term, T delta S, is less negative than delta H is. But as you increase the temperature, this term is going to get more and more negative. And so the next question might be, at what temperature does this stop being feasible? And to do that, set delta G as zero, and then solve for the temperature. So let's give that one a go. So what I've done is just put in zero for delta G. Minus 203 is still the entropy change. Entropy change is still minus 176 over 1,000 because it's in joules, so I need to change it into kilojoules. And then rearrange to find T. And when you plug this in, you end up with a temperature of 1,153 Kelvin. Now, 
anything above this temperature, the reaction is no longer feasible. Anything below the temperature, and the reaction will work. And that came about because both of these were negative. As you increased this T delta S, it became more negative than delta H. Now often they'll ask questions about feasibility of reactions, and you need to talk about this equation, but in a strange way. Because of all the negatives involved, it makes it really confusing to talk about it. What you need to be able to do is think about it purely algebraically, removing all the negative numbers from here, there, and everywhere. If we just think delta G has to be less than zero, that means that T delta S has to be bigger than delta H. Now, it doesn't matter if they're negative numbers or not. When I say bigger in this case, I'm just talking about further up the number line. So, minus 203 is smaller than minus 0.176. And if T delta S is bigger than delta H, then it's feasible. If T delta S is smaller than delta H, it's not feasible. So, if I just point you back to this one. But here, minus 203, this comes out to be about minus 52. Minus 52 is bigger than minus 203. That means it's feasible. If this came out to be minus 204, that's smaller than minus 203, you'd end up here with plus 1, and that's not feasible. So don't overcomplicate those answers, just write about the size of T delta S and delta H. And normally one or two mark answers, and you just got to make sure that what you're saying makes sense, and you're not kind of confusing yourself in your answer. Now the only limitation of this is sometimes you get a delta G which is less than zero and you think, great, that reaction's going to happen. And that's not always true because it's not only delta G which affects whether or not a reaction happens. This says it can happen, but rate kinetics also makes a difference. If the rate of the reaction is ridiculously low, then it just won't happen, or not on a time scale that we know about. And that's it for this topic on entropy and enthalpy. It's basically just this equation. So learn that. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you can join me for the next one. Goodbye.